Hello. Today we're going to do another request from someone who asked me if I knew a good way to make cherry cobbler. And I said, yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I have a good cherry cobbler recipe and I have a family story. So you're going to get to hear a family story again. The fruit part of the recipe at this point, and we'll make the crust later. It's three or four cups of fresh cherries. We bought these during the summer when they were very cheap and we just put them in the freezer. One cup of sugar, a dash of salt, juice of half a lemon, one teaspoon almond extract, and cherry juice to your liking. I'll explain that as we get there. Then you're going to have to measure that cherry juice and add a corn, uh, one tablespoon of cornstarch per cup of juice. And then you're going to dot it with butter. So the story about Aunt Addie, for all of those on the Lancaster side, Aunt Addie lived in Brownwood, Texas, and Brownwood, Texas is known as the home of Underwood Barbecue. And they had some of the best cherry cobbler that you would ever want to eat. And Aunt Addie spent years trying to figure out and tweak her recipe to where it finally got to where she could say, I make cherry cobbler just like Underwood's barbecue, and she did. It was delicious. I never got her recipe, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna attempt to do it too. So in this bowl, I've already got the cherries. I drained. I tried to drain all the liquid off because we need to know how much liquid we're gonna get. The problem I always have with doing a cobbler is you never know how much liquid is gonna come out of your fruit so I just go with what I the best I can do sometimes but this is uh, a little over three cups it's not quite four cups this is the juice I poured off of it and so that a little less than a cup so we're gonna count one cup and I do want more juice than that well that's all the juice that I had on the cherries this is a health food product called black cherry concentrate, you use one ounce to seven ounces of water. So I'm gonna put that in there. Now that's two cups of juice. So with two cups of juice, we're gonna need two tablespoons of cornstarch. So stir your cornstarch up in there real good. We might as well stir up the sugar. And so this is a cup of sugar and a fourth of a teaspoon of salt or a dash of salt. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in too. Kill two birds with one stone. And let's go ahead and put the teaspoon of almond extract. In fact, it's the almond extract that Aunt Addie kept, kept tweaking until she finally got the right amount of almond extract. So, I'm going to put a teaspoon in there. This is Watkins, by the way. Oh, that smells so good. <laughs> oh, I like Watkins. And if you remember on my little video about the tea party, I talked about the Watkins man that used to come around to the country uh, in a horse-drawn wagon, and he would stop at the farmhouses, and the ladies would trade chickens or eggs or butter or whatever they had to get his Watkins products. It's a neat story, true story. We've got the cherries, we've got the sugar and the dash of salt. The lemon juice was in here because I wanted to count it as my liquid too. So we've got the lemon juice, we've got the almond extract, two cups of cherry juice, and two tablespoons of cornstarch. We're gonna dot it with butter. I'm gonna put about two tablespoons, maybe three tablespoons of butter. You know, Julia Child says everything goes better with butter, and then I think they made a, an advertising campaign out of that one time, but it came from Julia Child. Oh, you know, everything's better with butter. So we're going to set that aside, and now I'm going to go and put up the recipe for the crust now. 
So we're back now and I'm going to be doing the dough for the cherry cobbler. It calls for one and a half cups of flour and a half teaspoon of salt and that's already in here. One tablespoon of sugar is already in here. I'm gonna put a dash of cloves, not much. We just want, we just want a hint of cloves in this dough. And then we're going to put in a stick of butter. It's at room temperature. Of course, the original recipe calls for shortening, but I don't like shortening. <laughs> I always use butter. I use all natural ingredients whenever possible. And like I always like to say, there's nothing natural about shortening. Schmear this in. That is a, that is a proper cooking term, by the way. <laughs> you, you just schmear it in. Here's our dough using the pie crust method. And it's crumbly now. And all we have to do is add our water. Fault calls for one fourth cup of water, but we always just put a little at a time. And you toss it with a fork. You add a little more as you need it. Toss again. It's starting to come together now. The less you work it, the better it's gonna be. But we, we do need the whole quarter cup. I think it's ready. But you gotta get in there with your hands. All right, when I did the pumpkin empanada video, I mentioned that a good dough will clean the bowl off and our bowl is very clean. There's our dough. So now we're going to work it on a, a cloth. I always use a linen cloth. You can use a board, you could even use the counter, but I just always got into the habit of using it on a cloth. Press it out a little bit with your hand. Okay, I've got a little bit of flour in the bowl here. That's what we're going to uh, use to dip our glass in. And then I've got some flour here in this sifter. You don't even need a, a dough roller to do this. You can just do it with your hands. Mash it out. Okay, you remember when I did the tea party video, I was talking about my grandmother, Lydia, who dipped snuff, and this is one of her snuff glasses. This is about 50 years old. Dip our glass in the flour, and we're just going to make little circles. I'm doing it this way today because I like the looks of a lattice top on the cobbler, but that's a lot of work. And so if I do round shapes, I'm going to get kind of the same effect and then that also lets me see as that cobbler cooks if if I need to make any adjustments in how the the liquid is shaping up and this cobbler is a little smaller than what I usually make because I didn't have quite as many cherries as I had hoped so I'm gonna have some dough left over but you know what to do with leftover dough you make some cinnamon sugar dough with it. Mm. <laughs> there goes my honey again. <laughs> I'm also going to use a little shot glass here. Get a few more just just to decorate it up a little bit. And I'll bet you've never seen a cherry cobbler that looked like that one, have you? They can overlap a little bit. It doesn't matter. So there's our cherry cobbler. I'm going to put it in the oven and cook it for about 40 35 40 minutes at 350. The cobbler's in the oven. I've reworked this leftover dough. I've sprinkled it with sugar and cinnamon, and now we're just going to make dough pieces with it. This is probably one of everybody's favorites. So we'll just pick them up, make random strips, and we'll put those in the oven for about 10, maybe 15 minutes. Okay. We just got the cobbler out of the oven. There's what's left of the pie crust. We enjoyed some right after supper. Now, we're going to look at this cobbler. Whew. You can tell I just got it out of the oven. It's still steaming. 
But what I like to do, the reason why I like to put little peak holes in my crust is so I can check that liquid. But see that liquid? Now that has some substance to it. it but it does have some uh, body. That's a good word. It's got body to it. So I don't need to do any adjusting. But if I did need to do adjusting, all I would do is lift one of these crusts out and I would drain some of that liquid off and I would add some more cornstarch to it. And because I cheat. <laughs> we can call this cheater's cherry cobbler. But that's just about like I like it. So no, no need to adjust at this point. And my dad has already said, when is that cobbler coming out of the oven? So I'm going to get some for him. <laughs> and I'm going to get some for my darling. A full bowl? A full bowl? <laughs> okay, honey. See, that crust is flaky. There, is that enough, honey? Okay. And I'm going to let him sample it and tell you what he thinks. I'm going to abstain tonight because <laughs> I've been eating too much Wonder Woman dressing. And I have to watch my carbs a little bit. Mm. I'm going to take one bite of the crust in some of that juice and blow on it. Oh yeah, that's going to be good. The almond flavoring is just on spot on. So we thank you very much. This has been Granny's Bee's Recipe. Take it and make it your own. <laughs>